This is part two of the one, two, three wrestler. I got this mold all topped off. It is ready to go. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it and then come back here. All right, let's take this case apart. Let's pull it apart. This should come right off. Oh yeah, no worries at all. Easy. Quick and easy, no worries. Let's get the ends. All right, beautiful. Now let's see how easy this is gonna to be to pop apart. Should pop apart like that. Just the way I like it. <laughs> how about this? Yep, like a champion, no worries. Peeling off the back. This piece popped off. Oh yeah, and this is why I love wax together molds. Because they just pop apart, easy and fast and simple beautiful there's our pour funnel there's our vent where's our scissors let's trim a little just for fun let's clean this little mold up make it a tiny bit prettier than it is this is pure cosmetics doesn't hurt but i don't like the flash on stuff i'm anti-flash i admit it anti-flash and I find that scissors are just about the fastest way to remove the flash get that done quick now in theory this boy could stand in the mold like this and we could just rubber band him up right just cr crisscross him with rubber bands but you know me I'm not a big fan of these big slab sides these flat sides the rubber bands will just not put any pressure and our figure is in here and we want pressure in here in the middle nice even pressure so let's go ahead and engineer us up some cradle parts that will help the rubber bands make this a nice tight clean mold let's get on with it okay let's start The hardest part of cutting a mold is always the early parts, the first parts, as the mold puts up the most resistance and there's the least to grab a hold of. As you work the mold open, you get more grip on the flap of rubber, makes it easier to pull it away from the body, and the whole cut process does become easier also is helpful now we can pull out ah beautiful <laughs> we got out the funnel the sprue and that is helpful because now we can it's not in the way of our cutting Now people wonder, how do you deal with holes in a mold, like the armhole? Well, can you see that bridge of rubber stretching across? We pull it out on one side, we come in and we just cut it. And it's because it's stretched, we're actually cutting much closer to the middle of it than you would think. They stretch the rubber to facilitate the cut. Okay. Now, I want to cut down. There's a vent right there. Oh, I found it perfect. Cut down this vent perfectly. As I knew where it was, I was looking for it. I headed towards it and I knew exactly where I wanted to go. Okay, now I'm cutting out the bridge in between this hand 
and his shoulder and neck and head, and I just cut that perfectly right down the side there. Okay. See, now as you get the mold open, it becomes a lot easier. The, the more open the mold is, the more you have to grip. It's always the very beginning part of the mold that is the hardest part. And I only want to cut down as far as I need to. I don't want to go crazy on the cutting. Always looking for the best angle, the best way to approach it. Always trying to cut clean at the model and jag it away from the model as much as I can. Always trying to find the line of the body. Again, as much as you can. People freak out that their cut mold lines aren't going to be as straight as, their, as they would be if they were doing a clay up mold. But on a cut mold, it doesn't really have to be. It's not that critical. See, again, I'm pulling that bridge between the arm and the back, front to back. And by pulling that bridge out, it allows me to cut it free. Okay, I cut that bridge. <sighs> now we're getting somewhere, finally. Now we are getting somewhere. Same with in between the legs. You just cut down in between them. Here we go. That should take him out. Should come in. Oh, not quite. All right, this one foot wants a little bit more release down this side here. Come on, baby, get that foot out of there. Come on. There we go. Ha! Huh. He came out pretty unscathed, I would say. Not bad. How's that looking? Not bad. Uh, not bad at all. I think we got ourselves. I don't see a bubble in sight. No flaws that I can see. There's a little bit of rubber under there. It probably should come out. Yep. Okay. <sighs> yep. I think we have a usable, nice, tight mold. <laughs> We're going to know now. Now we get to cast it. But before we do that, we have got to attend to this mold. Now, I do not love these flat sides. And so I'm going to want to be able to put more pressure on them like that. More pressure. So to that end, I have built a pattern here. This beautiful pattern right here. And this is going to be the pattern for our piece of wood. So let's see how this will lay out on here. It's going to lay out just perfect, just like the way I planned it. And we can go ahead and just, I'm just going to do this the simple way and just tape it on here. That's just as easy a way as anything to get this thing on here and hold it on while we cut it out because I want to cut these out. And the other thing I did just to be cute and to save time is where these little X's are, I tacked these two pieces together. This is both sides of the mold case. And I tacked them together just to cut them all at once. So I don't have to cut them separately and cut them at the same time. So let's just tack this on with tape. But of course, what happens is, well, as you cut the tape, it gets loose. So one of the little tricks you can use is you can just cut out these little eyeballs here and there, a couple of them. You don't need a lot. Cut out some eyeballs. And then you just tape on the eyeballs. And that holds the pattern down even when you've cut out the perimeter tape. Oh my God. That's really, I mean, it's just genius. It's genius. I wish I had thought of it. I didn't. Somebody taught it to me. All right, let's go cut this out. Here we go. All right, we can go clean these corners up on the belt sander. 
and the parts that were glued together in the corners are still stuck together, but I cut those off. See that? So brilliant. Okay. We got these pieces cut and we got everything nicely rounded over. Very beautiful. So we can pop this off. This tape just absolutely did its job perfectly. Very nice. Now, obviously, uh, these mirror like that. They've got to be mirrored. Otherwise, it won't work. So this is going to go like this. This is going to go like this. So let's get to gluing. Let's quit yakking and get to gluing. I don't have time to be fooling around all day long. Now the position of this is not crucial. There's nothing measured or scientific about it. Its job is to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to put pressure on the rubber, to use the rubber bands to our advantage and put pressure on the, on the rubber. That's all these are for. And you may say, well, this is an awful lot of work to build a mold case. But I will tell you that the work you put in now, you will reap dividends down the line when you get really, really, really sharp, clean parting lines. All right, I'm gonna go through and put on all the other pieces that we need on this boy and uh, you, when we get those done I'll come back to you. These are ready. Let's pull them out. Get them out of here. All right. Beautiful. We're one step closer. These are going to go in here like this. Let's get some rubber bands going here, folks. Let's see what bands we're going to use here. Are we going to use these great big old bands like that? Maybe not. Those might be too big. It's a weird leap, or they might be just exactly the right thing. It's always fun to sort of play with the rubber bands, figure out uh, what combination of rubber bands you're going to need to make the thing work. You don't want them to be under too much pressure. That's the thing. You don't want to put big old gnarly bands on. I see that all the time. Huge mistake that people make is they put on these big old gnarly bands and they just deform the mold horrendously. And that is not a good idea. Yeah, look at that parting line closing right up. That's what we want to see. That is what we want to see is a tightly closed parting line. Boy, that is looking pretty nice already. Pretty nice already. Now I'm going to check the bottom. Bottom, not quite yet. You're going to want at least one more band around the middle like that. To squeeze those. Nice. That's nice and clean. Nice clean parting line there. Okay. I wonder if we could get a long band across the long way and then pull that together. Yeah, just like that. That did a beautiful job. All right. You can really finesse these bands. And if you're paying attention to what your parting line is doing, all the way around. You want that parting line to just disappear. Just go the way of the dodo. Completely. The more you can get it to disappear, the better the chances are it'll have disappeared on the model. I think we are ready to pour this bad boy. Ha <laughs> ha! Looks great. All right, let's mix some resin and pour this thing. <laughs> I mixed up some A and some B. Hope I got a halfway decent flesh color. <laughs> we will know in a minute. Let's go. Do the simul pour. So they mix as they pour, speeds things along. As soon as they just get to dripping, that's when I call it done, about like that. 
All right, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Get this thoroughly and well and truly mixed. I'm gonna say that's pretty well mixed. Okay, let's pour. Now I'm gonna partial pour it, about that much, maybe half. And let's go ahead and fill those legs. I wanna make sure that those legs fill because there's some high spots in there. That I wanna make sure we get into. Okay, a little more, get that in there. Rocking and rolling as always. I wanna fill those legs from the bottom. Now as we're coming up closer to it. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, Let's, hopefully we'll get all the bubbles out. Just the right amount. Yep, we've just had a couple of bubbles rise to the top. Top it off. Boy, we had just exactly the right amount. Perfect. All right, let's take it and let's head on over to the tank. Over to the tank we go. Okay, let's pull this boy out of the tank. Close the valve, open the valve. And let's do this thing. All right, what do we think? I think we got anything out of it? Think we got anything worthwhile? <laughs> Let us see. Let us see. Come on, tank. Hello. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, tank. Did your job once again. All right, let's yank this boy out. See what's what. See what's what. All right. Looking good on top. Very good. Let's take this boy over here. Set ourselves on down. Excitement time. <laughs> Fun and games time. Let's pull this boy. Let's do it. Put the bands over here. If we pull them off in order, we won't get them tangled up. If we can remember what order we did them, just look for the top band, I guess, right? This one looks like the next band. Nope. But this one. Okay, that was good. This one. Okay. This one and this one. Nope, not that one. This one. Then this one. Yep, I got them in order. Beautiful. Miracle. <laughs> All right. What do you guys think? You think we have a wiener here? Is it a winner? All right, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's always fun. It's always exciting. Oh, what do we got, what do we got? It's kind of honey colored. <laughs> Let's pull him. Let's yank him. Oh yeah. Come on, baby. Oh, the mold looks great. No flashy on the molds. Okay, remarkably little flash. Okay, not bad, not bad. Now, bubbles anywhere? No bubble on the leg. I think we have a completely, I don't wanna to, to brag too soon. All right, well, okay, I found one little micro bubble right there so far in the hair. Yeah, I think he is bubble free. And looking good, whoops, looking good. Let's trim him so we get these vents and sprue off him. I love to trim at this point because everything just cuts. Just no effort. Just cuts right off nice and clean. Minimum cleanup. On a big thing like this, you might have to whittle it a little bit. But if you do it, when it comes right out of the mold, it cuts right off. Boy, try that in, in 24 hours. You are not going to make it. And I like this piece because this really is a good comparison because, you know, there's no such thing as a 100% invisible parting line. Sometimes you just get 
magically invisible. But they're always going to have some parting line. Uh, it's just a matter of which is worse. And uh, generally speaking, almost every time, it just is so easy to clean a parting line from a cut mold. Uh, it's very rare when they're really bad. All right, he's looking pretty good. Can sit there and fuss with them all day long. But in general, I think he's looking pretty good. I like to go around with a knife and clean the parting lines as much as I can. All right. Wow, I think he came out great. He's a clean casting, bubble free. It's gonna be super easy to clean and uh, polish up. If you like this video, hit that like button. It's the best thing you can do for the channel. And thanks for watching. I really appreciate you being here and I will see you next week.